you are, uh, as you conceive yourself, a Marxist and, that, and you believe in scientific socialism. How a Marxist who believes in scientific socialism and present uh, a book about the myth of the global market and is realizing the difficulties, the contradiction of the economic systems, uh, how they're binding together and of course with a socialist uh, uh, impression, with the socialist um, way of thinking about economics, uh, how it's, it's implementing here in Venezuela. I think uh, when we were, we, I was saying that it is a contradictory process, it is a contradictory process in the sense building socialism scientifically means to understand how, first of all, how to demystify capitalism. And first of all, we must understand the mechanism of, of functioning of this system. And when you start a revolutionary process, it's not that since the day you start this process, you are at the end of the process. You are just at the beginning. So you have a capitalist structure, and from this capitalist structure you must build socialism. To pretend to do it scientifically is that you must first of all understand the contradiction of capitalism and then try to develop this contradiction in order to get rid of capital and try to invent, let me, let me use this word, a new system, which is just a system we can think first of all scientifically and then define a strategy to realize it. And the, f the, the, the contribution that I, I, I try to do with, uh, with my book is basically on the first part, the, 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 the need of demystifying the, the, the capitalist relationships, which, uh, which are the, the greatest, the main obstacle when you try to develop scientifically socialism. And this is a big problem, not only in Latin America, but all over the world, because of the fact that in capitalism, the market, appears as, a, as just uh, something neutral, but capit ma the market is the circulatory system of capital. It's not just we are exchanging goods, we are exchanging uh, commodities which have been produced in a certain way. So the very struggle when I speak about uh, scientific socialism is to decode modify the system. We should not build, commo we should not produce commodities, we should produce goods and services which people need. And in order to do this, you must change uh, production, you must change the structure of production, you must change the, the capital-labor relationship, which is not uh, uh, nullified from one day to another. Venezuela is, uh, people working in Venezuela work under the pressure of capital. Mm -hmm. So when, when, I, when I think at uh, a scientific way to socialism, I'm thinking of the way of how to combine this people power the structure that is typical of Venezuela that Chavez was very able to, to, to build and, and to combine this with a, a project, a, a conscious project of transforming the, economies in the economy in order to get rid of capital. Mm -hmm. So when I say that it should be done scientifically, I have in mind uh, a big role of, pl of planning. Economic planning is not something that we should think like uh, uh, another way of doing economics affair with respect to poder popular. People power and economic planning, in my view, are strictly uh, mm, compatible, and they are the two elements of transforming this concrete context scientifically towards socialism. When we say scientific socialism, we don't have the, the, the blueprints for doing but, everything. But that transformation, we've been seeing it in Latin America almost for half a century because Cuba, Nicaragua, Venezuela, Bolivia uh, were countries, are, are countries that have been trying to implement this way of production, producing for the people to facilitate them their lives, <coughs> to give them better access to, to the market. But we've seen that capitalism itself uh, does not agree with this uh, way of production. How does that combine, which is the contradiction there, why does capitalism does not, um, is not interested in this kind of... Because they do their <laughs> job, come on. <laughs> if you're a capitalist, you're looking for profit. And if you're producing a commodity, it's because by producing that commodity, you are expect a profit. Are they taking out the profit? The problem is that if you try to build a different system, 
you should be very uh, aware that capitalists will attack you. If you are efficacious in your, in your, in your socialist process, in your revolutionary process, you should not expect that capital stand and seize and say, oh, look, uh, nice guy, now they're not producing for, uh, for, for our capital needs, they're producing for people's needs. Of course, once you get, you put the market away from your society, you put capital away from your society, you should expect that capitalists will have less cap uh, profit opportunities, so they will not be happy. And now when we think about this, the economic structure of all these countries that you have mentioned, that have uh, started a very important revolutionary process, mm -hmm. the real challenge remains the same for me. Do this country have really managed to get rid of capital? Do, do this, this country have really managed to transform the economic structure in order to satisfy people's needs. Maybe is that what... Please let me finish okay. because otherwise I, <laughs> I can appear being saying the opposite of what I want. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to develop any criticism against countries that have started the revolutionary process with all the obstacles, with, with an aggression of the, the huge power, economic power, military power, information power, which are the United States. So, of course, this is something we should always take in mind. The challenge, I'm, I'm, I'm talking as a comrade to you, I'm, I'm talking, my, my, the people I would like to, to be listened from are comrades, are not uh, specialists. And I think that when you have to transform the economy, you should know that it is very difficult. But at the same time, you should also be uh, very autocritical. And when we think at the structure of Cuba, which is probably the most advanced uh, from a political point of view and from a historical point of view in this revolutionary process. The real problem is that the Cuban uh, economic structure is not yet, after six years of the, from the starting of the revolution, is not yet a structure that can manage to uh, satisfy people's needs. Because after all, what they are exporting and what they are importing, it's not so different from what it was when it was just like sort of colony of the United States. So this is a very challenging process, but I think when we talk about this process, we should be very aware that it's not a process that can be developed freely. We should have a planning way of a strategy to develop step by step uh, a develop, a, the development of socialism, which is the same thing of putting capital away from the society. So the struggle against capital is obvious. It's not something we should complain. I, I, I understand that for people it's normal to complain about the, the power, the imposition of, of capital against us. But at the same time, if you are fighting the lion, the lion will try to eat you and kill you. So don't, don't complain if you are, once you, you fight a, a, a superpower like the United States that they are be behaving this way, which of course is, uh, is disrespectful of, uh, of any decent and democratic and social uh, uh, perspective. And now I want to take back the question I was going to ask you. Is that kind of um, achievement, because maybe we, because we can say that Bolivia did achieve that kind of uh, production to make a successful revolution that nationalized industries that expel from the country um, these great transnationals and they were actually getting profits for the nationalized in, and put, to put it in favor of those who had less. Is that a uh, successful achievement? Uh, why today we are see this coup d'etat against President Evo Morales and uh, why uh, transnationals and corporate media and, and so on and the United States and multilateral are going to to take pa uh, possession of those goods that are actually getting profits that made the socialism system to gain profits for the people? I think fascism is the last way of capitalism when the market does not work. So neoli neoliberalism is a, is a, appears as a peaceful way to impose capitalist relationship over society. When people understand that it's not working and they start a revolutionary process, then capitalism shows its real face. It's a violent face, it's a fascist face. And going to your question, which is very, uh, it's very interesting because uh, you are suggesting that by nationalizing 
industries what happened in, 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 those all, countries in all countries that are starting this, uh, this revolutionary process. Uh, this is necessary but not sufficient. Of course, if you don't nationalize these industries, which are the main uh, s source of capital mm -hmm. in these countries, you cannot talk about a revolutionary process. You can talk about uto utopi utopian processes about how the world would be nice if. Here there is a process of transforming the economy, and the first thing is that you must say to private capital, now this is not yours. You cannot use this to, to put your control over the, of the population of the people. So this is the first thing. Another thing is to transform a nationalized companies into something which is not supposed to do the same job as before. If you use PDVSA here in Venezuela to produce oil and just to export oil and with this money, then you go to the, you give part of this money to a social fund in order to uh, let people uh, have something from this nationalization. You are not really transforming the economic structure of Venezuela. You are just making a redistribution. And this redistribution is very, very important at the beginning of a revolutionary process because a revolutionary process which does not change the real concrete life of workers, of people, is not a, is not a revolution. You don't have the support of the people. Evo has the support of the people, it's evident. And it is because he changed, he was able to, to change the concrete uh, st style of life of these people. Mm -hmm. Um, goods and services which were not affordable, now people can afford them. But what I'm saying is that it's not enough to take control, to nationalize an industry. The, the, very, the real challenge is that this industry should then re, re, readdress to new, to new goals. And it's not that easy. It's not something you can do from one day to another. But I, what I'm, if I can use this term, reproaching, these revolutionary processes is that they, they have been very able in the redistribution uh, aspect of the revolution. They have been less efficacious in transforming the economy under a conscious plan in which you think to another world, a world in which people don't need to sell their labor power in order to buy things. They can see their needs satisfied if you have a healthcare system which is working you don't need pharmaceutical companies. You, can you, can, you, can, you don't have to nationalize it. You just have to form people that can then produce these pharmaceutical drugs. This is, uh, this is a process of building uh, the human uh, competencies and knowledge which are useful for capitalism. When I speak about decommodification, I think that we should decommodify material production and, and also the, our way of looking at this, our competencies, it is not school and universities are not supposed to form workers going to do their job for a capitalist uh, who is only looking for profit. They should, we should build new, new, new uh, I mean, when we discuss about transforming our brain and uh, the material reality, there is this uh, contrast between ideology and, uh, and material life. I think if you don't develop this dialectically, you will never be able to build socialism uh, scientifically. So I think that the material aspect, nationalization, is very fundamental. But then if you don't manage to transform this process and to uh, put this process in relationship with the transformation of our education, our role in society, the role of, uh, of, pe of, of people power, here I think Venezuela is very, is very challenging because the first thing Chavez did was to build uh, a society based on the power of the people. So you have this, this structure of governing power, which, which is very important, but it's not enough if you don't manage people controlling the economy. How does the power of the people combine with the struggle to eliminate or to soften, in a way, the traces capitalism has left, the profound traces that capitalism have left in so Latin American societies and in the world in general? You should struggle in every, capital is everywhere. We know that the, the real, the, the, the basic point is in the production process when we sell our labor power. So this is the first point in which capital imposes its rule, its law on society. But this is just the beginning. When capitalism uh, develops, it develops by the tentacles of capital are everywhere. 
as I was saying before, capital is not only because I buy capitalist commodities in order to eat and to wear. It's, it's, only, it's also because it transforms our social relationship when we, when we go to school and we, when we need uh, health care and, and in all our needs, capital is taking control. We are here in a television, but television, this is a, this is a particular island <laughs> of television in an ocean of, uh, of uh, market relation of capitalist television. So everything becomes a commodity. And when we think of transforming this system and thinking that people in every aspect of our social life should be aware that capital and the market subreptitiously uh, are present in our life, even we, if we don't see them. But to fight against capital is not just to fight in the workplace. This is obviously the, f the most important thing to take control of the economy, but then we should get rid of capital in all aspects of our social life. When we talk about the environment, I, I, I cannot stand all these people preoccupied by the environment and they don't understand that the environment is like this because it is capitalist environment. We cannot change the, all the, the, the pollution problem within the capitalist system because the environment is a commodity itself. And if, in a, if I am a capitalist producer, I really don't care if I, if I am destroying the, the planet or whatever. The, the things I'm looking at is my rate of profit. And this is the very contradiction of capitalism. In this sense, when we, 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 we discuss about how to change the things, I think that we should discuss about this in every aspect of social life. When we discuss about the environment, and when we discuss about gender relationships, when we discuss about race relationship, when we discuss about school, uh, everything. Arts, uh, but even social, even uh, scientific research is very commodified. Because as a researcher, I know well that if I want to be an important researcher, I should be visible at, in certain journals, which are mainstream journals. Everything becomes a commodity. If you are not there, you are not you, you, you are not uh, allowed to speak. So um, this transformation of social relationship, I think, should be um, should be guided by people with uh, the conscious that the market is not neutral. We should get rid of it. Julio, we are running out of time, but I have one question. It's I the, la it's the last, but um, I hope it's, I think it's important. Today in, in Latin America specifically, we are seeing this um, wave of social protest against neoliberalism. Um, Lenin said that imperialism is the highest, is the highest part, uh, the highest stage, of, a capitalism. stage of capitalism. And we are seeing also that many of the progressive governments that have come to power in the last 20 years in Latin America have declared themselves anti-imperialist. Is that a declaration of principles from those progressive movements, the wave of protest against neo the neoliberal model an answer of the people of the society that they are tired of the capitalist way of running markets, of running societies, of running um, everything in the life. When Lenin wrote in 1917 this uh, nice book you mentioned, the first thing he, he explains is that Imperialism is not what we s what we say today. Imperialism, in, in Lenin view, is the is the fusion of the monopoly of the industry and the monopoly of the banking sector into one on one thing altogether. And this happens also by imposing this on the state. And this happens also by imposing this in international relationship. So th this is, in very few words, what I understand about Lenin. When we talk about imperialism here, very often it's just uh, the U.S. attack against here, against this, uh, against an economy, against a country, against a revolution. But still, it's not a problem of uh, a country attacking you. It is. Lenin speaks about financial finance capital. Finance capital is the fusion I was saying before, and finance capital is what is controlling the economy. The United States only puts their their, their weapon. Their, their military power, their power in all the senses. But when we have to transform this, this, uh, this economy, we should remember that the neoliberalism uh, uh, era didn't begin because uh, Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan say, oh, it would be nice to have more, exchange, more market relationship. 
it was because the United States were in a deep crisis and they pretended they needed to impose uh, the free movement of capital in order to find new profit opportunities everywhere. So when we try to get rid of imperialist po policies, we should understand that it's not just the United States, it's finance capital. Mm -hmm. And finance capital is, is present in every aspect of our social life, even if we manage to take the, the US Army out of here, because uh, when uh, they like to so much to say boots on the ground, you don't put boots, <laughs> your boots on this ground because there are people. But there are many ways to put in the boots yeah, on the ground. Yeah, this is this is the way they don't put the military boots, but they put the capital uh, tentacles on the, on our society, mm -hmm. and this is the problem. So you know, the neoliberalism is a way of imposing imperialism, and that's why I think uh, that it's basically the same thing to criticize neo neo neoliberalism and fight again in against imperialism and trying to build socialism. Thank you, Julian. Like this, we come to the end of this from Caracas. We were speaking with Julio Palermo. He's a professor, he's a comrade, he's a researcher, he's a writer, he's a researcher. He's been here in Venezuela for the International Book Fair of Caracas of Venezuela, this Philben 2019. And he's been talking with us here in from Caracas about economics, about Marxism, about socialism, and how people, societies struggle to face the challenges that neoliberalism and capitalist economy, economics put to these societies. Like this we come to the end, thank you very much for your attention, until next time.